<laughs> it was definitely different doing fatalities in MK4 as opposed to the previous games because it was, everything was in 3D. Definitely, I think the biggest thing was the ability to sever limbs and um, we were never able to really do that before and so when you were able to blow people up and, um, and just, you know, tear them literally limb from limb, uh, that opened up a lot of creative input for more things that we could do. Now we can move the camera around. We did a lot of funny, like, kind of like, maybe three camera cuts of the same, like, you know, explosion or something like that. Like, big thing is like, you know, we'll have the body blow up, and have the camera cut around it, then like the last camera cut, you see the, the head rotating and hit the camera and fall. Well, the biggest limitation on the animation in the 2D games was that every frame of animation was an entire separate image. So it was very memory intensive to have smooth animation. So with motion capture, we have this full fluid motion that wasn't available in a 2D game. Animation-wise, it actually becomes a little bit easier because you only have to capture the motion once and then you apply it to a 3D model as opposed to having every single character in the digitized world, you'd have to have every single character act out having every fatality done to them. One of my favorite fatalities in MK4 was Reptiles. The one specifically where he actually jumps up on the victim and just starts gnawing at him. And he gets up, he pushes the victim down, the camera zooms up on the character's face and you just see a mutilated face. It was just really, really gruesome and uh, really effective. Next would probably be the Shinnok one, where he, his hand, that skeleton hand, would come up and, and drag you into hell. That was kind of cool, too. I came in at the very end on doing fatalities. I did Reiko, so that's the one I remember the best. Not that it was a very spectacular fatality, but it was the very first Mortal Kombat fatality I ever programmed. I think the advantage for not having to deal with the arcade was that we had a, a fixed platforming, granted the console systems vary, but uh, not having to worry about the, the real big differences between uh, graphic chips and things that the uh, arcade systems have versus the consoles. The time that it takes to go from raw data to finished product is much shorter. You get to spend a lot more effort on the uh, creativity side of it. We just about tripled our polygon count. We expanded our texture size. Uh, tremendously, we expanded motion and a lot of the effects we could do. So it opened up a lot of doors to do wild fatalities. So with Deadly Alliance, suddenly we knew we were in the home. We didn't have to ask for 50 cents every two minutes. So we can really stage our fatalities and make them these big events. And that's why they started becoming a lot more elaborate. My favorite fatality in Deadly Alliance uh, has to be the uh, Sub-Zero pulling the, the whole a skeleton out of, the, out of his victim. That was the first fatality programming that I got to do and um, it was a lot of fun uh, putting in the effects, the blood, the bones. <laughs> One of my favorites was Cyrax, was where he had this uh, hydraulic arm that came out and grabbed the victim and just like slammed him up and down until he was a bloody pulp. That was good times. I think my favorite fatality from Deadly Alliance was Kung Lao's. It was, um, you know, it was, it was a little bit of humor, but it was also kind of flashy, stylish. You know, he threw his hat, it stuck into the guy's head, and he fell down, and then he would kind of stomp on the, uh, the opponent, and the hat would fly up, and he would catch it and do this kind of fancy pose, which was, you know, silly in some ways, fancy and uh, stylish in other ways, but it was um, probably one of the more elaborate fatalities from Deadly Lines. For MK Deadly Alliance, we scaled back to only one fatality per character, basically due to time factors. We didn't have time to do two for every character. It just got to the point where at the end of the game we just couldn't get all the content in. So we ended up deciding on one fatality per character and that's how it ended up. Part of the reason we decided to go with two fatalities in Deception is we'd heard um, pretty clear from a lot of the fans that they, they wanted more. They really loved the fatalities in Deadly Alliance and they wanted us to expand and, and keep adding, so we decided to uh, go for two with each character. Q. 
Kira, one of the new characters, um, she just kind of does like, uh, she throws her knives at, at the victim's feet, uh, the guy gets stuck, and then she kind of does a little walk and then just rips the body in half and throws it off. Working with uh, like the animators, uh, especially uh, Carlos who does the um, animation, it was kind of funny seeing like how he would be the guy who's doing the walking for the female character. One of the most disturbing fatalities is the Molina one. And then when she's done, she does this sexy sort of, you know, mm, that was awesome. And what the fans don't know is that, that was Carlos. Baracho takes a swig of some wine, and then he takes a torch and lights the guy on fire. And then the other one is him basically, you know, uh, expelling gas or farting, and then using the same torch, you know, and having the gas like ignite and then burn up the character. The reason we added the, the Harikiri was to give the other opponent a chance, you know, just a little bit of a window to, to kind of um, turn the tables on the other guy that was performing the fatality. We thought it would be cool to make the, the fatality part of the game like a race. So it's basically who can do a fatality first. Probably one of my favorite Harry, Harry Curies is Ermax. It's just so gruesome. He, he gets down on his knees and basically just starts ramming his head into the floor. I think Kenshi, because it's the classical, you know, samurai Harry Carey one. And then uh, Nightwolf throwing up the axe, you know, impaled. Death traps is, are something that we've always wanted to have in the game, ever since the beginnings. The whole idea is that while you're fighting, there's a chance that even if you're losing, you could have just one or two pixels of, of life left. You still have a chance to win the match. And so you're trying to maneuver your victim into the, the danger zone. Uh, it adds a lot of extra uh, strategy to the game. My favorite death trap in Deception was definitely the grinder. When you knocked your opponent in there, be these two huge grinders that would pin the victim, and it would be bad enough that if the victim just went right through it, but instead the victim is trapped in there, and there's this little bit of tension where you feel his bones crushing almost, and then eventually he gets sucked through and blood is projected onto the wall behind him. My favorite death trap in Deception is the Hell's Foundry Smasher. The character gets kicked into a wall, lands on a hot slab of metal, his skin, his shoes and clothes should be on fire now. But yet he's trying to get back to safety on this hot metal and wham! Shooting The idea behind the creative fatality system is to really expand the fatality. Instead of just doing a really complicated button combo and sitting back and watching everything happen, we wanted to put uh, more options in the player's hands, let them show creativity by able to string different attacks. Every time you perform one, you have a little less time to perform the second one. So a really good player is going to get two or three part fatalities in there. And a great player is going to get like a seven or eight part fatality in there. And an amazing player is going to get, you know, a nine or ten part fatality in there. So it actually is a gameplay feature. We award currency in the game for it. So it's not only is it a great show, but it's a, an actually uh, a skill that you have to learn. We spent a lot of time thinking about the death traps in Armageddon. They're much more elaborate than the ones we've seen in Deception. My favorite stage fatality has got to be the classic falling through a floor and landing on spikes. And in Armageddon, we've updated it in the Bell Tower Arena. We have a four-pronged spike. When someone lands on it, each limb gets severed. We even have a rat that comes in and grabs one of the arms and num nums away with it. It's hard to pick my favorite death trap in Armageddon. There's a lot of good ones. The subway fatality because it's a, it's a remake in 3D of a fatality that we had in Mortal Kombat 3. And it's a lot more of a cinematic presentation, looks a lot, lot more painful. And, you know, people remember it, but they don't remember seeing it, how we're presenting it. Probably my favorite one right now is in the Wastelands. It's, it's cool. It's a cool visual. A guy getting thrown into the catapult with the burning, burning balls, and all of a sudden, you know, he gets flung. So he's flying through the air on fire, 
then he hits the wall, then he slides down. So it's a, I like that. It, it worked out pretty well. I was happy with that.